Good news, time traveller. You're on vacation in deep time, visiting many of Earth's prehistoric places over the eons. Specifically, continents that no longer exist in their former configuration. And what luck, you've managed to write out a postcard from each location, along with a couple of beautiful photos. Let's look back at the places you've been. Greetings from Valbara. Well, here I am at the dawn of Earth's continents. Valbara, maybe Earth's first supercontinent, assembled around 3.6 billion years ago. It's a raw and brutal place to visit, and holidaying here has been a hot mess of volcanic activity, earthquakes, and deadly lava flows. Wait, does my travel insurance cover lava? Yes, all good. Valbara is made of two cratons that today are tiny parts of Australia and South Africa, Pilpara and Karpval, just chilling in the middle of an enormous iron-rich ocean. The skies are hazy with volcanic gases like methane and carbon dioxide. The Earth's newest feature is a magnetic field. That reminds me, I need to buy a Valbara fridge magnet. My only company here are prokaryotic cells, little critters down in the shallow seas taking evolutionary baby steps in the slime. It's so insanely quiet and calm here, it's actually kind of unsettling. From an Earth that doesn't feel like Earth, the time traveller. Hi, from Ur. I'm writing to you from a tiny gem of a place, one of Earth's earliest continents, and at this time, probably the only continent. You can't beat Ur for a remote getaway in the Eoarchean era, 3.1 billion years ago. It's hot here even though the early sun is weak and dim in the hazy sky. The very air you breathe is a poisonous orange fume, so good thing I packed an air tank. Yes, I quoted Boromir. The land is rocky and empty, and the ocean is a weird green colour. The cool part? There's lots of life around, even though it's all microscopic and underwater. I've been checking out the pond scum in the rock pools with my microscope, watching little cyanobacteria divide and photosynthesize. They're making oxygen, one molecule at a time, and one day they'll terraform this planet and turn the sky blue. There's not much to do here, but it's relaxing. No Wi-Fi, no work, no traffic, just a young alien Earth figuring out how to balance life with chemistry. Sending primordial vibes, the time traveller. Salutations from sunny Kennelland. This empty, rocky landscape is Kennel Land, and I'm visiting about 2.7 billion years ago towards the end of the Archean. The scenery here is pretty stark. It's very windy, and there's not a tree in sight. The atmosphere is mostly methane and carbon dioxide, so I've been sunbathing in a spacesuit. The seafloor is slimy with microbial mats, and hey, guess what else I found? These rock looking things making tiny bubbles are stromatolites. They're layers of bacteria and sediment that have built up over billions of years. Some of these kennel land stromatolites might even survive billions of years into the present day. It's hot here, and without an ozone layer, I'm getting kind of burnt, so it's time to find a place that sells more sunscreen. Enjoying the Precambrian peace, the time traveller. Best wishes from beautiful Nuna. I'm on Nuna, a gigantic Proterozoic supercontinent from around 1.7 billion years ago. I'm in a time period nicknamed the Boring Billion, but it's not that bad. The movie on the airplane over here was more boring than this. You know the one I'm talking about. According to the Nuna guidebook, Lonely Nuna, there's plenty of sights to see here. The naturally occurring nuclear reactor of Oklo, the epic Vredefort impact crater, the hike across the Proto-Canadian shield, and, uh, lots and lots of rocks. The skies are clearer now than in the Archean, and oxygen levels have risen a lot thanks to those cyanobacteria still bubbling away in shallow seas. Multicellular life might just be evolving about now, just FYI. From our not-so-boring planet, the Time Traveller. Here I am on Rodinia. I'm on holidays on this mega-continent one billion years ago in the Tonian period. It's like a huge jigsaw of tectonic plates, and ancient mountain belts are forming as they shift. Needless to say, the hiking in Rodinia is amazing. I wouldn't call it cold, but it will be if I overstay my visa by a few hundred million years. The next period in line is the Cryogenian, aka Snowball Earth. 
this might be the last destination where I need to pack a microscope to go wildlife watching. The earliest multicellular eukaryotes are beginning to appear in the Tonian. They're small, mostly green algae, and the primitive sponge, Utavia. Rodinia won't last forever, so it's best to book a plane ticket here while you can. From a restless continent, the time traveller. Windswept wishes from Panosia. Hello from the fleeting supercontinent of Panosia, assembled around 600 million years ago and already starting to break up. There's a great sense of optimism in the air, the old cryogenian ice caps are gone, and life is responding in a profound way. Panosia is pretty much made up of the old pieces of Rodinia, which kind of turned inside out. Unlike previous vacations, this time I left my geology guide at home, and instead I packed my weird creatures manual. The oceans have exploded with life, mostly squishy ovals that lie on the sea floor. Their shapes are so weird that scientists aren't even sure if some of them are even animals. They're fascinating to watch, and I'm trying hard not to step on them in the shallows. Although these microbial map adapted creatures are doomed for extinction fairly soon, you can almost feel the Cambrian explosion approaching. It won't be long now until we see worms, trilobites, chordates, and generally an evolutionary shakeup. From the edge of a biological revolution, the time traveler. Ahoy from Laurentia. There's no better tropical getaway in the Cambrian than Laurentia, a picturesque island continent basking somewhere near the equator. The seas are warm and perfect for snorkeling, the early reefs are shallow, and there are all kinds of crazy little creatures to spot. While there is still no life on land, I'm so stoked I packed my underwater camera. I've already spotted so many Burgess shale animals. I encountered the giant radiodont Anomalocaris and some smaller arthropods too, like Morella and Opavinia. There's trilobites everywhere, and crinoids and brachiopods too, setting the stage for the next 250 million years of reef living. There's also some pretty creepy stuff, like lobopods and preapulid worms. Snorkeling during the Cambrian explosion has to be one of the most glorious adventures in deep time. All I need now is some butter and garlic for Laurentian seafood beach barbecue. From the cradle of complex life, the time traveller. Cheers from Avalonia. I'm adrift on a small continent called Avalonia, moving northward on a path that will one day connect with other parts of Canada. Life is in full swing under the waves, especially these amazing Ordovician reefs. There are early corals and sponges, and some pretty weird things that are related to starfish. When I was swimming, I encountered jawless fish, wiggly conodonts, and savage eurypterids. The invertebrates are still in charge, from giant tarphicerids to tiny graptolites. The land is still kind of boring, but at least there are plants to be seen. The earliest plants like mosses and liverworts are giving the coastlines a touch of green. I'm sending you a nice souvenir, a trilobite shell. I hope it doesn't fossilize before it reaches you. Staying awesome in the Ordovician, the time traveler. Greetings from Gondwana. I'm down south today in a place called Gondwana. Here in the Devonian period, this is the largest continent on Earth. What better way to go visit Africa, South America, Antarctica, India and Australia all at the same time? On land, plants are everywhere these days, so for the first time, there's some good forest hiking to be done. I just finished up my diving tour offshore. This is the age of fish, and they really are spectacular. A few armoured fish showed me their funny jawless faces. A Cladocelas shark chewed in my flipper, and a spiny shark posed for a rather nice photo. The diving tour got a bit dicey once we came across the Dunkelosteus. It took a bit of effort to patch the bite marks in the boat, but all the survivors said they had fun. I'd love a pina colada about now, but most of the ingredients don't exist yet. Making ancient oceanic memories, the time traveller. Urgent warnings from deadly Permian Pangaea. Just kidding, I don't mean to worry you. I'm actually on holiday in the happy part of the Permian, the early Permian. While those travel brochures from the end Permian sell you a desert getaway of sandboarding and barbecue synapsid steaks, this is a different Permian experience. There are lots of things to see on Pangaea. Deserts, to be sure, but also mighty forests, dramatic mountain ranges, and even ice caps. But I've chosen to explore the humid swamps near the equator with an Everglades-style airboat. 
I've spotted Dimetrodon, Idaphosaurus, and a cute little Temnospondyl called Platyhistrix. Pangaea, by the way, is huge, stretching almost from the South Pole to the North Pole, and I haven't had time to see it all. I wish I brought insect repellent. These huge insects are horrifying. The sunsets over the Panthalassic Ocean are breathtaking, but there's a somber undertone. Whispers of the great dying are already in the wind. For now though, life marches on, resilient, strange, and beautifully complex. With fossilized fondus, the time traveler. Hello from Appalachia. It's hot here in the lush, swampy, coastal areas of Appalachia. This continent is actually part of North America, sliced in half by the Western Interior Seaway. Appalachia has much more mysterious fauna than the rock star dinosaurs of Laramidia, but I've already spotted some curious stuff. Dallasaurus, a small ancestor of the Megamosasaurs, that were still a few million years away from ruling the oceans. I also spotted the spectacular coelacanth Megalocelacanthus, Inoceramus bivalves, and ammonoids. These magnolia lined wetlands are an adventure holiday to be sure. It's been a day spotting hadrosaurs like Hypsabema. I'm going to sleep now. I hope the pterosaurs don't disturb my tent. With Cretaceous curiosity, the time traveler. Hello from Hell Creek, Laramidia. Here I am in the dinosaur infested paradise of Laramidia. I'm on a long, skinny landmass that's on the other side of the Western Interior Seaway from its North American counterpart, Appalachia. I'm here at the very tail end of the Cretaceous, where dinosaurs are at the most iconic, specialized, and diverse. Good thing I brought binoculars. This is an epic place to safari. The end Cretaceous at Hell Creek is where Tyrannosaurus rex lives, Triceratops, Ankylosaurus, Edmontosaurus, and other classics, all spending their final days before their tragic end. The climate's warm, and the weather is clear with a chance of asteroids. I need to change my fountain pen nib. Does anyone know where I can find any iridium? Stay fossilized, the time traveler. Warm greetings from Ice Age Sahul. I am on an epic prehistoric continent made up of Australia, New Guinea, Tasmania, and other smaller islands. This amazing place has come together because of the extremely low sea levels of the Pleistocene 50,000 years ago. The wildlife spotting here is amazing. It's a marsupial mayhem with a dash of monotremes for good measure. I've spotted diprotodons, a kind of wombat as large as a car, the giant kangaroo procoptodon, stripy thylacines, and a hungry thylacoleo. I ran from the terrifying giant lizard Megalania and tried to pronounce the name of the echidna Megal... Megalib... Mm, that one. There are humans somewhere on this mighty continent who probably walked here from Asia. They're carving out a foothold in this harsh land with a little help from fire and dreamtime stories. The rainforests, savannas, and deserts here feel alive and mythical. The rocks, rivers, and creatures all make Sahul feel ancient and momentous. From the awesome ancient south, the time traveler. Now, that's a pretty good collection of postcards from some savage, beautiful, and fascinating continents. Let me know if you like this kind of video. I could also do another postcard video of ancient continents that still exist, kind of, like Pliocene South America or the islands of Jurassic Europe. If you're interested in learning about the worlds of deep time, make sure to like and subscribe.